I always wanted to be an artist and make stuff. I mean, I didn't quite know exactly what I would end up doing, but I, I always wanted to make things. Um, and I've got really nice memories of, you know, my parents, my grandparents helping me to make, like, castles and, and drawbridges out of cardboard. And, um, yeah, I, you know, I had, a, I had a great childhood of, 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 of making and drawing and painting, and I knew that that was what I would end up doing. My name is Luke Edward Hall and I'm an artist and designer and columnist and I am the artist behind this year's English Heritage handbook cover design. I look to the past for inspiration but I'm really trying to kind of bring in a contemporary edge. I mean I'm not trying to create a kind of pastiche of anything um, and I don't, I'm never really sure about that kind of word nostalgia. I love looking to the past for inspiration and then it's just about creating work that feels contemporary. I was thrilled when English Heritage got in touch because I'm majorly inspired by the past and I love visiting old houses and gardens and um, getting inspired and, and, and learning about their history. And so it kind of felt like an, an amazing fit and also a chance to do something um, maybe a bit sort of unusual for them. So that, you know, it was really exciting that English Heritage were really up for me using bright colour and they'd always be saying add more colour in and, and, and that, was, that was really nice. The idea was to work on the, on the handbook design for 2022-2023. So that involves the front cover and the back cover and the little spine and then also the membership card and um, a couple of other things, bookmark and things like that. Um, and it's uh, inspired by celebrating Roman Britain. So I was looking up to Hadrian's Wall for inspiration and on the cover, that's what we see, Hadrian's Wall, Hadrian himself interpreted in my own, in my own way. describe your work in three words. Colourful, irreverent and romantic. My style, I'd say, is very colourful, playful, inspired by the past, but hopefully brought up to date and made contemporary. I think there's a real kind of DIY element to it as well. Somehow it's very handmade. I suppose because a lot of my work is based around my, my drawings. I buy a lot of um, handmade paper. It has this really lovely texture. I love buying old paper as well. Um, and actually, people give me old paper. I kind of use a mixture. But definitely kind of handmade and old paper with kind of character is what I love. I'll use printer paper if I have to. Window. Both. Velvet. Do I have a favourite board game? Articulate. Great one. Oh, my dog. My whippet. Probably sort of 1980s English kind of pop music, like Soft Cell and New Order. I love music, but I can't play anything. And I've gone through, I, I played the keyboard, I played the piano, played the guitar like really badly when I was younger and I can't do it and I wish I could. <sighs> Too much beige. I love color, but, um, but green I like because green I think um, I like most of its kind of shades. I wear all colors, um, apart from black. I don't own any black clothing. So many good bits. I mean, I love, I mean, there's so many good bits. I, I mean, I live in the Cotswolds and I have to say, I miss the sea, yes, but I do love the Cotswolds. West Country, I love, um, I love Dorset, Devon, Cornwall. All the villages, so beautiful. There's so much, there are so many amazing houses to visit, amazing gardens. The food is great here. And I love London. Um, so yeah, too hard to choose. I mean, I think with all projects, because, because I work across a broad range of subjects, disciplines, um, all projects usually begin with research, so that's going into my library of books. I have some books here, a lot of books at home as well, um, old magazines, and and you know I, I often do research online, looking through museum collections as well. I mean, that, what's really great about a lot of our museums is that you can view their entire collections online. So I do that, and then often I'll go and visit a museum or a gallery as well, and then I start sketching. I mean, as you've probably seen in my studio, it's sort of 
filled with piles of sketches. So I, I start just sketching, sketching, and I'll sort of see what comes out. I'll start experimenting with different techniques and materials, sort of build from there until I get to this sort of end result. When we first started talking about the cover design, it was sort of decided that Hadrian was always going to feature, but it has been through various stages. The temple was always going to feature as well, the sort of pediment and the columns, but we tried Hadrian shown as a sort of full figure. We did a kind of sort of shoulders up bust. We did just a head. We tried various things out. On these preliminary sketches, there we I've drawn Hadrian's wall as a kind of border, but we ended up actually making, a, for the final design, a border with a kind of rope motif um, inspired by a fragment that we saw in the collection um, at Corbridge with the text at the bottom that says handbook. Um, I, I hand wrote it. I tried a kind of Roman inspired um, typography moment. So it's been through various, various stages until we finally decided on the final version. When you go to a museum or, you, or, or whatever and you see the white, the classic kind of idea of Roman sculpture, it's beautiful, but it's it's a sort of myth, isn't it, that they were made like that and actually they were painted in these amazing colours, very vivid, bright colours. And so I suppose actually sort of working on this project, it's, it does feel like it's quite a nice fit actually to kind of reinterpret them in my own way that does somehow feel like it's how they were actually made in the beginning. Mm-hmm.